Hi, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Rise Up Mama podcast series. Um, I'm delighted to be here this afternoon. I've got a very special guest with me. Um, if you recall, so this is my audience, if you recall what I'm doing is interviewing the guest speakers who are coming onto the Health and Wellbeing Cafe every month. So I'm going to introduce you to the guest speaker in just one moment. Before I do, if you are not familiar with this series, my name is Vanessa and I'm a wellness coach, lifestyle coach, and I help busy women like you, especially mums, to um, tune into your mindset development and I provide nutrition and fitness coaching as well. Now, before we go any further, I will say that even though I specialize in wellness, Today isn't 100% my wellness day. I suffer from hay fever and even though I've been taking my tablets, I do have a very uh, strange episode coming on. It's been with me all day. Um, so if I do sneeze throughout this broadcast, I've actually told the guest speaker, I didn't want to rearrange, but if I do sneeze, it's not because I'm unwell as such, it's just my allergies. And I'm actually thinking it might be my cat, as much as I love her, I think because she's shedding hairs, it's actually irritating me. So please ignore me. But as I said to the guest speaker, she'll be doing most of the talking because I've got some fantastic questions lined up for her. So let me introduce you to the fabulous Madeline, holistic therapist with over 40 years experience. So, you know, hang fire for this uh, topic that we're going to be talking about because we're going to get some nuggets of wisdom from this very wise woman. Madeline, it's great to have you here with me. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really quite excited about this. Oh, brilliant. I feel like I'm important being oh. interviewed. <laughs> Well, as I said, it's a nice little chat, it's a conversation, but for any of you that have been following the podcast or even for the regular attendees of the Health and Wellbeing Cafe, Madeline is actually the mother of the fabulous Victoria, who we had on as last month's guest speaker. So this is just fantastic. So Madeline... I just want you to, you know, just give me a bit of background, who you are, what your background is. Just tell us a little bit about you, please. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I suppose before, I, as you know, as, 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 as your, your listeners, your followers probably know now, you mentioned uh, Vic, Victoria's my daughter. We work together now with Gentle Harmonies. Um, before we set this up, I suppose my background commercially was in commercial sales. I worked in search and select recruitment for years. Before that, I worked with a newspaper group. Uh, I even did a stint in a laboratory, <laughs> which sounds glamorous, but it wasn't really. <laughs> and before that, for many years, I was an army wife, um, mother of two. Um, well, I'm still a mother of two. <laughs> I just had to mute myself because I was sniffling, but I'm with you. This is a brilliant story. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Um, so that's, I suppose, my commercial background. Um, and then I left that to set up um, what I've been doing all my life, really. And, and Vic and I decided, because she was looking for something different, uh, she's probably mentioned to you, and we decided, right, let's get set up. Let's set up Gentle Harmonies. Let's. So it's, we're still sort of fairly new. But what we do, uh, we work with people on Zoom because with the COVID and everything, of course, nobody can get out, can they? So uh, we decided to have a um, a one to one where people to start with, some people get quite panicky. They have to go to a place, don't they? They think, oh, I've got an appointment at such and such a time and I've got to get dressed, I've got to catch the bus, <laughs> I've got to catch, get the shopping on the way back and all this goes through. So it's not the greatest um, environment then to, to have some healing. So we find that doing Zoom with one-to-one -one is so much easier. I mean, people don't have to get dressed up. Um, you know, we've had quite a few that are in the PJs, which is great. <laughs> 
and they feel more relaxed because they're at home um, and, and they feel that they can open up. So we found that that's been working quite well. Fantastic. So Madeline, could you tell me more about what you do? Because obviously the description, description is holistic therapist, which is quite broad holistic therapy. And also I'm interested in how you actually got started, particularly from where you were coming from with the commercial background, please. OK, can I start with how I got started? Um, I've, I've always been connected with the energies. I was one of those very strange children. I mean, was quite lucky because where I lived with parents when I was growing up, uh, there were some fields and, and little wood trees and things across the way. Um, it's not like that now, <laughs> but it was then. And I was one of those strange kids who used to climb up trees and talk to the fairies. <laughs> wow. That is that is amazing. If you knew yeah. that that energy was there and you just yeah. tuned in, yeah, it, it seemed perfectly normal to me. I thought everybody did. <laughs> uh, it was only when I started going to school and probably mentioning things and thought, oh, oh. <laughs> why are they looking at me like that? <laughs> is this something that you shared with your parents at the time as a child? I think my parents were quite aware of it, but it, I mean. Going back then in the ancient times when I was a kid, there was people didn't talk about anything like that. There was nothing on television. There was nothing in magazines. It, it just didn't exist. Um, so my parents were quite good, really. Um, and I remember my little Welsh grandmother saying to me once, you've got dragon blood in your veins. Don't forget that. I have not clue what she meant. <laughs> but I've found out since then that she meant being in connection and what have you. So that was brilliant. So as I got a bit older and, and sort of going to work, um, it was like Mad's lunch break section because I even used to read the tea leaves, I'd read palms, um, I'd take my tarot cards in. Um, I, I studied feng shui, that really interested me. Uh, that's probably my first thing. Um, so I used to help people with balancing their houses and, and so forth. I'm sure you know what, what feng shui involves. So you could say I've always been involved with energy and, and healing. So I've been doing so much different holistic work from then. Obviously, I've mentioned tarot, palmistry, feng shui. Um, dream analysis was a big thing for people. It's amazing how people's subconscious talks to them in their sleep. I mean, not everyday dreams, but sometimes there's, there's that one, isn't there, where you think, wow, I've remembered that. Yeah, I had a very unusual dream last night. Did you? Yeah. With a childhood, somebody that I went to school with, actually. And how it works out for us in our life is we have these. So when I say, and we've even worked it out, that she's actually my oldest friend. We've known each other since we were four or something like that. But we're not always in contact with each other. And how it works out is we'll have these many years gap of not being in contact with each other. And then we'll find each other. And she was in my dream last night, but it was really strange. But yeah, carry on, please. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's fascinating. And in fact, so many people talk about these things. that We've, we've done it on our website now <laughs> that, uh, that our members get a free dream analysis uh, as part of the membership and everything. And it, it's, it's brilliant. And it's nice to get back into that as well. So then I studied and I sort of practiced and teach Hopi candling. I'm sure you've heard of that. Um, in fact, for a, for a few years, my husband and my husband and I, that sounds very posh, doesn't it? Uh, we used to go clearing houses. I don't mean with a van, <laughs> emptying the furniture, but we used to clean, cleanse negative energies from people's homes. Um, I mean, sometimes it's not necessarily the family that, that's causing it or people who come in. It can be that the house was built on a, on a site that was pretty negative events or whatever. So that was quite interesting too. Um, and the mind, body, spirit events were always going on. And we used to have a stall. I used to do uh, free mini healing sessions um, uh, and had a workshop. I mean, all, all this was kind of a hobby I suppose really it was what I loved doing um, and we did a lot of it so then what do you say where did we 
where did it spring from there? I was trying to remember what your question yeah, was. Yeah, sorry, no, I was, the question, I think you've covered it actually. So uh, how did you get started and more about what you do? But I think the fact that you've cited so many different examples and aspects of your therapy, just to give people an insight, what you'll be talking to us about on the 25th of this month, so Thursday the 25th of March, you'll be specifically talking to us about uh, chakras. But I just wanted to allow the viewer and the audience an opportunity to understand that, you know, I'm actually speaking to a very experienced uh, therapist, which is one of my next questions, actually. Because of all of your experience, Madeline, did you have any hurdles along the way, which might have been personal and professional? If, you, if you're happy to talk about those personal hurdles, if they're relevant, okay. it would be interesting to know how you've overcome them with your career, because I know that you've got some exciting things coming up, uh, which we'll touch on later. But how did you manage those the early um, hurdles that many business owners face anyway. How did you manage uh, to overcome them, please? I think with, with what I did, because I decided, I said it was a hobby, I decided then to, um, why don't I put this as a business? Why, why don't I start doing this as, as, as work um, to help people? And because there's so many modalities, like crystal therapy, Reiki master, all sorts of things, the biggest hurdle I've always found was trying to explain to people what I did and how it benefits them. Because there's, I mean, even now, there's so there's so much knowledge about now, isn't there? And there's there's the internet, there's 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 people who do holistic therapy all over the place now. It's it's an up and coming, it's a great time. But it's educating people because even now, as they so many people are aware of things they don't necessarily understand what what it does how it can benefit them once you can explain that to somebody then your business can take off i think that could be with any business it's really time to get i'm sure you've had this with your nutrition and, uh, and your therapies well how does this benefit you because that's what it's all about that's what we do it for isn't it to try and help others so it's, it's sort of the education of going back to the ancients who, who just did it naturally. They always understood it. And the, the Eastern Hemisphere have always, always done it. I mean, with acupuncture that came from there. They still do it in harmony with modern medicine. But over here, um, a few hundred years ago, they just pulled away from it, uh, which was a shame. So but would you, sorry, there. would you say it was more like a cultural uh, challenge then as well in particularly dealing within the west so maybe for example as you said um in the eastern countries we know that these therapies acupuncture uh chinese herbal remedies and things like that are very much part of their culture and maybe um society is more inclined to go and seek advice and guidance from what we describe as um, an alternative holistic yeah. therapist so would you say that a lot of the challenges have actually been the cultural shift? Very much so. So I mean, I, I studied shamanism as well for a while. <laughs> Trying to remember what happened, and and that was amazing because, I mean, in Brazil, Peru, Africa, um, India, even in in Siberia, in Russia, uh, and the Inuits in in the. Uh, um, What's the North Bit where it's all cold? The Arctic. I can say Atlantis. <laughs> In the Arctic, they've stayed with these ancient knowledge. And I think, why, why are we missing this? What's gone wrong? But I think in the West, they turned more to medicine and, and surgery, especially surgical uh, problems, you know, during the war, like the Boer War or all these, these past wars. Um, and it was always oh, amazing surgeon. He amputated the leg in six minutes. I mean, the patient probably died and was suffering, but, but that's how they looked at it. And then they started saying, oh, this is all rubbish, all, all this healing, which is so sad. Yeah. Uh, missed hundreds of years of helping people. I mean, Reiki, for example, um, 
people didn't really know what Reiki was over here until the 70s. Um, and then when I started practicing, and I was saying, oh, I, I, I can, I'm a Reiki practitioner, this is what's that? Do you just want to give us a summary of the Reiki um, therapy, please? Well, Reiki, it, it, it was a Dr. Usui in Japan, actually, um, in the 1940s. He, he, um, he was like a preacher, if you will. Um, and he was interested in Christianity. Uh, as well and thinking well this Jesus was a healer and it, um, but you know uh, Buddha was a healer and so many of the religious deities were predominantly healers and helping their people so he was fascinated by this and he thought well why don't we do it now where has this knowledge gone so he spent years going all around Japan and, and to ancient monasteries and, and to temples and talking to so many different people, asking, where has this gone? Is it written somewhere? How can we find it? So then he decided, he went up, and I'll, forgive me, I can't remember the name of the mountain at the moment, one of the mountains in Japan. And he spent 20 days and nights on this high mountain meditating. He put so many stones in front of him so every morning he'd throw one stone away knowing that day had gone because gradually over those days of just meditating and you know your, your mind starts wandering and on the final day just as the sun was coming up and he thought this is my last day and I've, I've had nothing um he suddenly went into like a trance if you will and all these amazing symbols were given to him and he was there for quite some time. Um, you know, the, the sun was well up by the time he sort of came to, if you will. And he said, oh, I'll go back down the mountain, you know, <laughs> finish with the days. And as he, as he was walking down the mountain, he, he tripped and, and fell and, and cut himself, cut his ankle. And it's like, automatically you put your hand on it, don't you? Like, ouch. <laughs> he put his hand on it and it healed. And he couldn't believe it. And he was just like, what's happened? And further down, he stopped at this little, um, what we call a cafe now, and uh, stopped for some refreshment. And uh, the man there was saying, he's got a little girl and she was in obviously some pain. And he's saying, what's, what's, what seems to be the problem? He says, oh, she's got a terrible toothache, but we can't afford to take her into the city and so on. He says, can I, he says, I thought I'd just try it. And he, he held her face and, and thought of the symbols and took they could go. And he, he just couldn't believe it himself. And he went to uh, a temple where he, he had a great relationship with, with, with the man there uh, and spoke to him of it. And he was saying, well, this is, this is amazing. So what he did eventually, he went into to Tokyo in the big cities where the most poverty was and decided to help those who can't help themselves, like that little girl that didn't have any money to be helped. So he, he, he lived there amongst the people and healed them and helped them, helped them to have positive outlook on life, helped them to feel better so they could get out of there and find work and, and look after themselves. But then after years, he found that people were coming back I just go, why are you back? And they said, well, out there, it's, it's quite a busy world and you have to pay for healing and, and it's easy here. We don't have to do anything. And he thought, no, this, this can't be right. This isn't how it should be. So he created five concepts, which is a day's, a, a day's pay for a day's work, as it were. Um, always honour your elders and your parents. And he decided then to start teaching others what he did. Because he realised that if ever he died, you know, he needs to pass this on. So he worked at a local hospital um, 
and there was one particular person who worked there as a doctor, and he was also a Navy captain here in, in, in the, the war, and he came up to the hospital, and they were very good friends, and he taught him. But those days, you had to study under him and practice and practice for a decade before he even qualified you. And then there was this lady who came from Hawaii and went to Japan. She, her family originated from Japan. She went back to Japan and, and she was taken ill. And somebody said, go to the Reiki masters. They'll, they'll help you. So she went to him. And that's how she got to know both this doctor and Dr. Sui. And she was amazed and she stayed there. And she said, I want to, I want to learn this. I want to study this. And she, he became the only woman protege he had. And she was there for many, many years. And she only went back to Hawaii when her sister was taken ill. So she went back and she thought, I need to, I need to spread the word of this. <laughs> so she was spreading the word and, and she eventually ordained sort of 50 masters as she traveled into the US and, and so forth as well. So it's just come down from there. And what it is basically is working with the body's energy. It's getting in tune with your body. It's getting in tune with the body energy. And you use these symbols when you're a practitioner. You can, you can do it sort of level one, if you will, is to, to help yourself, to heal yourself and work on your own body with particular positions of your hands down your body. And you can work on your family, but if you want to become a practitioner, you have to do sort of level two, um, which is working on other people. Um, and just being in that moment in with their energies and working with them is just, as I say, it's humbling and it's just wonderful when, when they get the benefits from it. But no, but trying to explain that to people when I first That started. is an amazing story. I've never heard it explained like that before, but I think it's really good to actually comprehend the history of where things yep. are coming from. Because myself, I hear people have the title of uh, Reiki master, and it doesn't really mean that much to me. But now that you've given the layer of history, I think I'm going to actually absorb that more when people yeah. tell me about that. Well, so it, that took me, it took me about six years um, to become a master, a uh, Reiki master uh, teacher as well as practitioner. I, mean, I think they do it a lot quicker now. <laughs> but the reason it became popular in the West, going back to the 70s, if I can just say it very, very quickly, there was, um, um, I was going to say like an MP over in America. I can't remember what they call them. Is it, is it um, not governor, is it? What do they call them? Like a senator, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's late at night. I haven't had enough water. <laughs> um, it was a senator and he, he was in New York and he, he had a trip to Japan in one of these political trips. And when he was over there, strangely enough, he, he pulled his back and he got really bad back. And one of his Japanese associates said to him, you need to come and see the Reiki master, which is like repeating history, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and they took him, and he couldn't believe it when he flew back to America. He was like, couldn't believe that what had happened and that, that he was healed, he hadn't got a bad back. And he was being interviewed by New York Times, I think it was, and saying, how, how did you get on in Japan, you know, with your exchange with, with your visit? Uh, what did you find that was impressive? And he said, I'll tell you the one thing that really impressed me. I've discovered this healing modality called Reiki. And everybody, of course, everybody wants to know what the the senator does they want to do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all what's his reiki so it got really popular and of course then it started as she started going into america and making masters and everything there weren't that many of them then but then people started to get interested in it and it's also sort of around the time do you remember the beatles <laughs> wow <laughs> kind of <laughs> <laughs> I know you're old enough. I know, I love their music now, but yeah. <laughs> well, because of them, when, you know, when they, they, um, they used to see their Maharishi. Yes. At that time. That they went time, into that phase, yes. And everybody was like, what's this all about? 
because they're famous, you get famous people, everyone wants to follow them, don't they? And I want to do what they're doing. So it was just like a revolution then. Um, so we're talking about actually getting the message out, getting the marketing out. And I think what you said before about why is there maybe, I don't feel that there's resistance now uh, to alternative therapies, but yeah. if you, yeah, when you said um, when the surgeon was held in such high regard, again, that's all about communication and marketing yeah. and maybe if the community of therapists didn't have the way of sharing the knowledge, communicating their knowledge, it's for some people, it's you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So it's one of them. So I want to ask you, Madeline, because obviously you're going to talk to us specifically about chakras. Yeah. When we were um, speaking about what what type of thing you could have um, covered as we've heard in your uh, conversation, there's so many different angles you could have taken it. So you're speaking specifically about chakras. And I, during your talk, you're just going to tell, you know, the title of your talk is What Are Chakras? Yes. So you won't really have a chance to cover the next question because I want to know about the myths, the common myths that people have around chakras. Could you give us some comprehension about that, please? Absolutely. Well, in my experience, there's probably three main ones. The first one is that there's only seven chakras. There's seven main ones. But if you, get, I always liken it to you imagine that the M1, the motorway, um, and you've got the M2, you've got the M6, you've got the M5. So you've probably got seven, so we say, major motorways in the country. The, ma the major routes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> side roads, trunk roads, city roads, country roads, lanes. And, and that's very similar to your energies. You've got seven major ones that are coming off those and many, many more. And they go to sort of very tiny little. That's, that's very interesting because myself, I haven't done a great de deal of study into this. I've been looking more since I've connected with yourself and obviously it's going to be a topic um but it's actually interesting now that as I'm doing my research I can go in with that type of comprehension that what I'm being shown on the different internet sites is the main chakras are there any other common myths at all Madeline that people have around yeah, the chakras I think the one that probably scares me the most is, is people say, oh, you have to have your chakras open all the time. And that's, well, I'll go through this <laughs> and I'll speak with you, but, but that's totally wrong. <laughs> um, because by having them open, you're open to whatever energies come at you, aren't you? So if you could just describe without giving your talk away, what would be a chakra then, please? What is a chakra? A chakra is an energy like a vortex, if you will. Um, chakra is, is an ancient Sanskrit. Sanskrit is the oldest written language we have. It's about 4,000 years old. Um, and the chakra means a wheel. So if you can imagine, say for example, the heart, if you can imagine that all the way through your body is this spinning energy going right through, coming out the front, coming out the back. It's just spinning energy. And if you're open, if you don't close them and you're going, say, for example, in a, in a busy place like a shopping mall or, or somewhere really busy, or hospital, you're like a, a fishing boat <laughs> uh, with, the tr with the nets out and you're just pulling in any negative energy from that place and that busy place and all the people that are going by. I mean, I don't know, have, you ever, have you ever sat on a train or a bus and... and you get on and you're feeling great and you're sitting next to somebody and they get off and you you think, God, I've suddenly got a really bad headache. And that's as simple as it is. They I can relate to that in another sense of, obviously not now, because I've, actually I'm going to rephrase that. I was going to say in a physical world, yeah. sometimes you can walk into a room and you just feel something. Sometimes it's very positive. Sometimes it's very like... I don't feel right. What I'm actually going to say is I personally feel that I've been able to pick up energies 
even in a cyber world. Yeah, absolutely right. That's exactly what it is. It's like when people say, oh, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Um, because I felt something or felt shivers or um and, and, and that's that's what it is, it's your energy body. The third thing you asked me for about three, the third one that is people often think, oh, I'm going to have a chakra balancing session and, and that's going to fix everything. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that with energies. Yes, yeah, some people might be lucky, it might take one session, but it depends. I mean, we're a bit like we're a bit like weeds. <laughs> um, and you can imagine, I don't know if you've ever tried to get a dandelion out of a lawn, <laughs> but that route goes down to Australia. So if you've got a simple little weed where you can just pick it up, that's fine. You get something like a dandelion trying to pull that up by the roots or get those emotions or, or, or the discomforts out of that can take a long time. Sorry, I'm muted because of my sneezing. I don't normally mute myself during the conversations because I like it to be interactive, but I don't want to uh, disturb <laughs> your beautiful um, examples and stories that you're sharing. So I do want to ask Madeline, in terms of chakras, I understand or comprehend that it's about energies. Can yeah. that be linked to our digestive system at all? Because every month I share some nutritional information at the health and well-being cafe and this yeah. month i'm actually going to talk about the digestive system yeah. is there a link at all please absolutely certainly is uh, and it's called the solar plexus which i'm sure you and, and lot of you... oh yes i've heard of that <laughs> so what's the solar plexus then <laughs> i'll tell you what it is have you ever had have you ever felt a bit nervous or a bit excited or suddenly feel you've got butterflies in your tummy definitely you know when we say that where your stomach is that's your solar plexus working okay it's energy field working and that is connected each chakra is connected to physical parts of your body um, but your solar plexus is governs whatever goes on with your physical stomach your digestive system okay so if that's slightly off balance then you're going to get upset tummies and whatever problems you may have going through your digestive system. So Constipation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's your solar plexus dealing with your stomach, which helps to digest your food, as you know, and, and so forth. But yeah, solar plexus. Brilliant. Thank you. So this next question is more about you and what, <laughs> yeah. what you know what makes you happy because I like to share happiness habits at the cafe. So I yeah. love quotes. Is do you have a favourite quote at all, Madeline? And if you do, could you explain why the quote has that meaning for you, please? Okay, I probably the thing that I'm always saying to people is this too will pass. Um, it's quite an ancient quote, nobody really knows where it started, but they believe that it's, it's in the Asian Persian days, uh, which is really going back a few thousand years, um, where the philosophers and poets, and one particular called Rumi, R-U-M-I, um, I had a wonderful book of his, I used to love I'm very it. familiar with his work, absolutely yeah, love him. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes. Unfortunately, I lent it out and then I got it back, <laughs> but there you go. That too will pass. <laughs> and the fable behind it is that um, there was this, this king um, who ha had real down days. I mean, don't we all? <laughs> and he used to send for the best scholars and, um, and poets and philosophers uh, to try and help him feel better about himself. And it got to the point where they used to say to him, this too will pass. In other words, don't dwell on it. You know, it's, it's a problem. We all, we all get down days, don't we? We all feel better bed in the morning and everything. You just think, well, tomorrow I'm going to feel better. Yeah. It's, it's just a glitch. This will pass. I love it. And what I want to share is about that alignment and knowing when you're in tune with your emotions. And I will say, you know, even Victoria Session, your daughter, it really had a positive impact 
on my on me personally moving forward and I made some decisions even over the last two weeks that has been about being in alignment because go back to your quote this too will pass Victoria showed us about how we can be you know what we're in control of yeah so I think some of the things that maybe we have we have concerns about yes these this too shall pass but yeah. you can influence the passing of that it's yeah. not always about it being um an external thing that you have to wait for that to um manifest so yeah. that's great thank you okay. um i got a glimpse from victoria that you're working on an exciting project <laughs> i just thought i'd give you an opportunity to give some more details if you're oh, happy to okay. share please yeah of course um, yeah, we're quite excited about it. We're, we're actually working together on, on, on online courses uh, and also an audio book for every chakra. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, you know, we don't do things by heart. That sounds amazing because she said it was a book, but she didn't actually say it was an audio book. And I think we need to be mindful that people take information in in different ways. So audio is fantastic. Well done. Well, I, I think sometimes people can't be bothered to read. You know, if you, people get fed up, don't they? Reading, if you had to study books at school and everything else, and it's like, oh, no, I don't want to read another book. <laughs> so sometimes it's nice to just relax and just stick your headphones on. And so we just thought that would be a really good idea. So that's what we're working on. Um, it's in its infancy, but we're really excited about it. And I mean, the, basically the objective behind it is it's to sort of help anyone who's who's got a little understanding uh, to recognize and balance their own chakras as well i mean we can help them as much as we can and, and then hopefully we're, we're giving them it's giving them the tools isn't it it's like that old saying isn't it you can teach a man to fish that's one so it's like hopefully we're teaching them to help themselves so that's good i mean obviously again we're going to talk more you're going to talk more about chakras but I mean, are you basically saying that chakras is something that we need to know about? And, you know, is it that important to us? I mean, if we don't do anything about our chakras being in tuned or balanced, is that going to have an impact on us? Well, absolutely. Again, as I was saying with the solar plexus, which affects your digestive system, it's connected with digestive. Each chakra is connected with the physical. And it's that energy vortex. If it's like... A dimmer switch on a light um you know if you, if the energy is turned down you can't see very well you can't work very well in the dark can you so they need to be looked after they need to be balanced uh, and regularly you can't do it once and that's it because things change don't we uh, it's like you can't get your roots done once and not bother going back again <laughs> so it's it's vitally important to keep physically well and mentally and emotionally well as well. Wow, I love it because for myself, obviously I encourage people to look at the food, what they're eating, yeah. the nutrition that they're taking in because what, what you eat, that is true. Yeah. Um, in terms of energy, exercise personally if I don't exercise I feel the difference so even uh, just before our conversation now I wanted it to be a jog but it wasn't going to happen with my <laughs> with my sneezing and everything so I went for a walk and again it's about me recognizing that I'm doing something that's important I've invited somebody to share your time and your wisdom with me I need to be in the best energetic space that I can be and particularly when I'm not feeling great uh, with the hay fever and everything so how could I shift that and a new exercise was going to be doing that so it's very interesting that you're actually saying that chakras is something that we should be uh, mindful of as well so i'm very very excited to know more uh, on thursday the 25th of march so the next question is actually about reading and you've explained you kind of touched on the fact that sometimes people don't always have time to read books which is very true um i just wanted to ask you are you reading a book at the moment and, and if you are what are you reading please madeline I'm an absolute bookworm. I always have been. Um, oh, I can show you. 
the honeybee, the jellyfish, and me. Which what sort of titles? That is brilliant, isn't wow. it? Wow. Thank you. you. That sounds it. great. It's title. <laughs> it's by a chap called Richard Lode. Um, basically, it's quantum physics, which I get really excited about. Um, because at last, these guys, I love the quantum physicists because now they're proving to the world scientifically what healers and, and empaths and, and everybody for centuries have been trying to tell them. Um, and it's really looking at the reason it's called the honeybee, jellyfish and me, uh, because honeybees and jellyfish can heal themselves. If they hurt themselves, they cut themselves, they can heal themselves. So it's looking at, well, why can't we, like me, us, me, you, us, people, heal themselves? And it's all, again, as you saying, it's your mindset. It's, it's understanding. And quantum physics is proving that we can do this. There's so many, oh, I could go on all night. <laughs> so many experiments being done, uh, which are amazing, amazing results. So, yeah. That's why I'm reading that one. It's a good one. It's only a little book. It's only uh, 144 pages. Um, in fact, the actual book itself, that's just, what's it? The actual book itself is about 116 pages. How good is that? That and sounds it, amazing. And like you said, quantum physics, there's so much knowledge to okay. take in from yeah. that particular field of study. So that's fantastic. It's really quite simply, it's, you know, it's for like, people like me to, to be able to understand it. Brilliant. I, I remember the, 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 a chap who is he's a quantum physicist and he, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his, his, um, for his work. And they said, uh, he was interviewed and they said to him, oh, well, of course you're helping people to understand quantum physics. And he looked at him and he said, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't know quantum physics. Exactly. <laughs> So it's Brilliant. nice it's something that's simple for us to understand. Yeah. So would you recommend that as a, a kind of beginner's starting point, or is this for somebody who, like yourself, who might have a bit more knowledge on it? Yeah, probably. Uh, not so much for the, the science, but it's interesting for healers. Okay. You know, we can heal ourselves. Wow. Um, and this is the science behind it. We're not. We're not all making it up. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Tip or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's fact. Which it's is brilliant. Really satisfies me. Fantastic. So my final question. Um, it's really for my audience. Okay. I like to see the guest speakers leaving a happiness habit oh. with the audience at the Health and Wellbeing Cafe and also on the podcast. So, do you have a happiness habit that you would share with us today? at all please yes um tell you what to do you just you just if you, i know you're not in a very good place at the moment, but you just think about this for a moment just take your mind back when you really felt happiness it doesn't have to be a big event like your wedding or, or graduation or, or whatever it can be anything it can be making sandcastles with your kids or or, or anything at all but just take your mind back to when you felt really happy, it's a really good day. And when you're there, I don't want you to just think about it, I want you to feel those emotions. Just be you back in that moment. And there's four reasons we do this. First of all, it's a great stress buster. Because <laughs> if you have a day where the kids are driving you mad or everything's going wrong and you just want to squeal, you can just go on the balcony or in the garden or, or, or in another room and just take a couple of deep breaths and just do this. Just go back to that happy time. Feel it. Don't just think about it. Feel it. It boosts your happiness. Happy hormones in your brain start reacting. So that helps you straight away. I think it also makes you feel stronger. You know, you're not down. Uh, you know, when you're happy, you feel great. You, 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 you're, you're empowered. Uh, and it also encourages your personal power. It gives you that strength. I mean, you can start doing your power poses. I bet Vic's told you that, haven't she? She certainly <laughs> does, and, uh, and they do work. <laughs> so that's, that's basically a little tip that I've got. 
thank you so much. I mean, even for myself, my moment would just be even Sunday and Monday, which is putting on music. And when I say having a good dance, I mean 21,000 steps worth of dancing in my kitchen. <laughs> and my curtains are down at the moment because they've been washed. So the neighbours probably did have a glance, but I was not bothered because, again, it's about that emotion, the connection. Yeah. And I found that I was doing writing in the evening and the words just came so quickly. Oh, just tuning music, in. Music is wonderful for the soul. Absolutely wonderful. So before I let you go, Madeline, we do like to, um, or I do like to ask the guest speaker about the raffle prize um, that will be taking place on the 25th. I mean, Victoria shared a fantastic prize. With us. Oh, no, I, I know, I know that the I don't. Well, I know the session hasn't happened yet, but I know Victoria and the woman that um, won the gift yeah. have exchanged contact details. But I mean, how are you going to top this? I mean, what, what, have, we got, what have we got coming? <laughs> You just had to go with that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> How do you beat that exactly? Um, well, there's two things I'm going to be doing. I'm going to discuss which is the most imbalanced chakra. You know, we, we've done a study of over 200 people uh, to see what was the most common uh, that we found, which which balance was was out of sync and out of it. So I'm going to be talking about that. We do a free chakra quiz, um, which it's basically, it's just like a little questionnaire. There's seven questions. You just answer them really quickly, tick box, and send it to us. And we will work out which is your most imbalanced chakra and advise you how to fix it. And then what I'd like to do is to, whoever wins the raffle, as it were, I'd like to, to give them a free chakra balance meditation. Um, I offer one-to-one -one chakra balance uh, and we can do that. We can do that on Zoom or, or I can record the meditation and they can keep it. That's amazing. So obviously, I mean, I have sent out the link to your website oh, to great. my audience. Even if they can't make the event, we always yes. record the session yes. so they can listen to the playback. So we'll encourage the audience to take the chakra quiz I haven't done it myself but now that Madeline said chakra is something that I need to be you know if I'm thinking about health and well-being I want to do it holistically so it has to be part of something that I'm going to be looking at seriously yeah. uh, so I'll do my own quiz as well yeah. so the winner will receive a one-to-one -one with Madeline so it's fantastic so I'll encourage you all of the listeners and the regular attendees of the Health and Wellbeing Cafe, make sure that you've done your quiz in advance because if you yeah. do happen to win on the night, then at least Madeline will have that information and you will actually get a personalised meditation because you'll know exactly what she's working with. So this is absolutely fantastic. Madeline, I would like to give my apology that I haven't been as interactive as I normally would be on these calls because it's died down a little bit, but I do actually have a, pi a pile of tissues now next to me. Um, I do feel quite stuffy in my nose, so I'm going to have to take another tablet. But when we connect again on Thursday, the 25th of March, hopefully... I will feel 100% and, you know, you will be getting the vibration and the energy of the call. I'm yeah. sure Victoria told you about her experience of being on the call with us. And I'm getting so much good feedback about the Health and Wellbeing Cafe. Uh, we do have regular people that come on. I've got people who've expressed an interest of coming on to your session as right. well. So we know that we're going to have people on the call. And like I said, to anybody who's listening, you can also watch the replay. So I'm going to leave it there, Madeline. Thank you so much for your time. It's been marvellous to speak with you. And thank um, you for being such a hero. Oh, thank you. I mean, you know, I've had people like say to me, 
Oh, you know, when it's a live event, you know, how much do you charge for the Health and Wellbeing Cafe? And I'm like, no, it is a free event. And I'm actually going to stop using that word free. It's a complimentary event because it's yeah. my gift yeah. to the world. <laughs> it's free there's a catch don't <laughs> exactly it's my gift to the world so yeah. it's um it's an honor to be able to spend time with yeah. healers yeah. therapists you know people like yourself i mean what you shared with the with us this evening is actually given us history which helps many of us who may be quite new to holistic therapists to have a, a better comprehension of the ancient, like you said, I love that word, ancient, how the ancient knowledge, yeah. it still is very much something we can use, learn from, incorporate into our everyday lives and, you know, take the wisdom from the ancients and yeah. help us to not only heal, but I feel it's about prevention as well. Yeah. If you can actually get to a situation where you're looking after your body, your, yeah. or your mind, your body, and your soul. Yeah. Then as we uh, go through our life, and even if we're facing difficulties, challenges, things like that, I feel that you've got techniques and tools yeah. that you can pull down to help you in those situations. It's a great trilogy, isn't it? Mind, body, and soul. Exactly. I absolutely love it. So, <laughs> Madeline, I'm going to go because I can feel another sneeze coming on and I don't want to keep <laughs> muting myself. I but this is, to meet you again. Yeah, That's this good. has been wonderful. Um, I will be uploading it onto my podcast later on this evening and it also does go onto YouTube as well. So I'll send a copy through um, to Madeline for your own records. I should my perfume, shouldn't I? Do you know, I normally put a squirt... Oh gosh, my nose is going... <laughs> I normally put a squirt of perfume on for like interviews and <laughs> and the event and I do it because it kind of sets the tone as well because if we were meeting with each other face to face I would still present myself to the best of my ability and make sure that I smell nice <laughs> take care, take so, care. Madeline, you take care lots of love thank you so much and I'll speak to you soon take care